most of our cactus, we grow them in our gardens because of their beautiful flowers. They're very big, very colorful. If my favorite one this time of the year that's in flower on one of the Echinopsis, all of South American the Echinopsis, you can see the hoverflies, they love it. Really lovely deep flowers, the female bit in the middle and the male all around the outside and the semicircle around her. The sun's not out today, but usually they've got a, a vanilla fragrancy sort of smell, really nice. An example of what I've said about like stunning flowers is these Echinopsis here. The flowers unfortunately don't last that, that long, so this one was open yesterday and now it's gone. <laughs> and today we've got this one, which is quite a nice flower. They only last probably up to about a week, all of these flowers, but my argument is for the week that it's in flower. We eat the flowers uh, with some uh, salad, as a salad, and we eat the fruit. If I could take a cactus home, I would take the Blosfeldia lilliputiana is cute. So the flowers are very tiny, like almost half of a centimeter. Things like the dog poo plant, quite difficult to grow and quite rare, but oh, aptly named. Terrible smell. Well, it's a way of attracting all its, its potential pollinators by producing a horrendous smell. So here we have um, an example of the genus Lithops, one of the pebble plants. And Lithops means stone, literally. And now its disguise is, is broken because you can see what appeared to be a pebble is actually a flower. These actually are also a, a, a bit of a botanical trickery because these are not petals in the conventional sense. These are actually modified stamens and these plants in fact lack true petals. And the way these open and close is in the morning the upper side of the strap-like structure grows in relation to the lower side and then in the evening when the flower needs to close, the lower side grows in relation to the upper side. And the consequence of that is that over three or four days as the flower is opening and closing, it gets bigger. So the flower is often twice as large at the end um, of the flowering period as it was at the beginning. This guy here is a Philocerus leucotephalus, mm. and he was open this morning. A lot of cereus pollinated by bats. You'll open tonight, will you? Yeah, I think it would. So many of them, when they flower at night, are often of a very bright white, white nature. So the moth, so the bat will see them basically and be drawn in by, by their smell and pollinate them. So many are pollinated at night. Why you have the queen of the night over there, one of the biggest cacti flowers in the world. It's like a Christmas cactus relation. Selenicereus um, grandiflorus. Esta planta es, es, se le llamamos cholla, es, es una planta que viene de, de la zona de San Luis Potosí, de los desiertos de esa zona, y es sumamente espinosa. Las espinas son muy agresivas, pero da unas flores muy, muy, muy grandes, amarillas, muy vistosas, que ayudan a la polinización de otras especies. These funny little rude shaped furry structures, they're fabulous. In years to come, these will get this size and massive flowers in this huge clump. Airtox nigra spinus, this one. You can visit Tom's impressive collection of cacti and succulents in his World Garden of Plants from April to September. Nigel Taylor is now director of the Singapore Botanic Gardens. While at Kew Gardens, Ellie designed the 2011 outdoor cactus display. But you'll have to wait now till 2012 for the next spiky extravaganza. And Dulce, you'd have to go to Mexico to see her designs. And why not? There you'd see cacti in the wild. <laughs>